anti-D prophylaxis for pregnant women who are rhesus negative. Background Hemolytic disease of the newborn affects the fetus or neonate, and results from the transplacental passage of maternal ILO antibodies directed against fetal red cell antigens inherited from the father. Over 90% of all cases of clinically significant hemolytic disease of the newborn affect rhesus D, RHD positive infants born to RHD negative mothers. The mothers usually make the MDD antibody following a small fetal maternal hemorrhage at delivery of the first RHD positive infant. This does not harm that infant, but successive RHD positive infants are then progressively more affected by hemolytic disease of the newborn. Prophylactic anti-D, whether antenatal or postpartum, can only suppress primary RHD immunization. It has no effect in women who have already developed anti-D, however weak. Some women currently become sensitized prior to delivery of the first pregnancy. It is estimated that between 55% and 80% of these develop silent sensitization, that is sensitization in the absence of any identifiable risk event such as should prompt the administration of anti-D. It is such cases which the proposed intervention seeks to prevent. Approximately 16% of women in the UK are RHD negative, and in about 10% of all pregnancies the mother is RHD negative and the fetus RHD positive. During these pregnancies, the mother is at risk of becoming sensitized by transplacental hemorrhage. The severity of hemolytic disease of the newborn varies. In its mildest form, it is detectable only in laboratory tests. More commonly, the infant has a mild degree of jaundice which responds to phototherapy. More severe disease can cause physical disabilities and mental retardation. In its most severe form, the in utero anemia causes cardiac failure, high drops and intrauterine death. Prior to the introduction of any immunoprophylaxis, the frequency of hemolytic disease of the newborn was 1 per 100 births in second pregnancies, and higher in subsequent pregnancies. In the mid-1950s in England and Wales, hemolytic disease of the newborn was responsible for one death in every 2,180 births. Since that time, anti-D prophylaxis and advances in neonatal care have had a major impact, and the current figure approximates to one death in every 20,800 births. In 1999, the most recent year for which figures are available, there were 621,872 total births in England and Wales. Around 10% of these would have been RHD-positive infants delivered of RHD-negative women. Current Provision of Routine Antenatal AD Prophylaxis AADP, across England and Wales is very patchy. It has been estimated that approximately 12% of hospitals are currently operating a policy of offering this intervention to pregnant RHD-negative women. Description of Proposed Service The proposed service evaluated in this report is the routine offering of ADP either to all pregnant women who are RHD-negative or to RHD-negative primigravide only. The intramuscular anti-D immunoglobulin would be given as two doses at 28 and 34 weeks. It would supplement, rather than replace, current standard practice of routinely offering anti-D within 72 hours of delivery to all RHD-negative women delivered of RHD-positive infants who are not already sensitized, and also offering anti-D within 72 hours to all unsensitized RHD-negative pregnant women who undergo a potential sensitizing event. Otherwise such women would not be protected against large bleeds in the antenatal period or around the time of delivery. Go to Objectives The overall aim of the report was to evaluate the clinical effectiveness of ADP for pregnant women who are RHD negative, and the comparative cost effectiveness of Offering routine ADP to all pregnant women who are RHD negative Offering routine ADP only to primigravide who are RHD negative Not offering routine ADP In each case it was assumed that the current program of offering anti-D antenatally to all RHD negative women who suffer a potential sensitizing event, and postpartum to all RHD negative women delivered of a RHD positive infant, will continue. Go to
Methods A systematic review of the literature was performed to identify all studies that compared women receiving routine ADP with untreated controls or that evaluated the economic impact of routine ADP. A model-based economic evaluation of offering routine ADP to all pregnant women who are RHD negative, and to RHD negative primigravide only, in addition to conventional ADP applicable to the NHS, was performed. This economic evaluation assessed the cost per fetal loss, stillbirth, neonatal or postneonatal death avoided, the cost per life year gained, LYG, and the cost per quality adjusted life year. QALY, gained as a result of disabilities avoided. Go to Results Number and quality of studies 11 studies met the inclusion criteria. They included 7 non-randomized trials with historical or geographical controls, 1 randomized controlled trial, RCT, 1 quasi-RCT, 1 community intervention trial and 1 retrospective before and after study. A follow-up study to one of the non-randomized trials studied the safety and efficacy of antenatal prophylaxis by examining obstetric data relating to women in the trial in their first and subsequent pregnancies. Because of the paucity of RCT data, only one true RCT was found, and that used a dosage half that of the lowest dose currently considered appropriate. All these studies were retained for further consideration. However, most were methodologically poor. Clinical Effectiveness In all studies, the proportion of women sensitized was lower in the intervention arm than in the control arm, although in some studies the difference was small and not statistically significant. Two doses of anti-D at 28 and 34 weeks gestation appeared to be more effective than one dose at 34 weeks only. There appeared to be no significant difference between the effectiveness of two doses of 500 U and two doses of 1,500 U. Although there was no evidence relating to the relative effectiveness of two doses of 1,250 U, it is unlikely that this will differ significantly from that of two doses of 1,500 U. The best indication of the likely efficacy of a program of routine ADP in England and Wales came from two non-randomized community-based studies. The pooled results of these studies suggested that such a program may reduce the sensitization rate from 0.95% to 0.35%. This gave an odds ratio for the risk of sensitization of 0.37 and an absolute reduction in risk of sensitization in RHD-negative mothers carrying a RHD-positive child of 0.6%. Although the number of such women needed to treat, NNT, to avoid one case of sensitization was 166, 10.006, and natally RHD-negative woman will not know if she is carrying a RHD-positive child. Thus all RHD-negative pregnant women would require treatment, and not just the 60% who are carrying a RHD-positive child, making the overall NNT 278, 10 6 by 166. It was estimated that currently 625 sensitizations of RHD-negative women per year lead to a total of at least 30 fetal deaths, stillbirths, neonatal and postneonatal deaths. Avoidance of sensitization can thus be expected to avoid fetal, neonatal loss in 4.8% of cases. The NNT to avoid a fetal or neonatal loss in a subsequent pregnancy can therefore be estimated as approximately 5,790. Health Economics The drug costs of treating one pregnancy with two doses of 500 are 54 pounds and with two doses of 1,250 are 47 pounds and 80 pence, at NHS list prices. To this can be added an estimated cost of administration of 10 pounds. The gross annual cost, including administration costs, of offering routine ad to all RHD negative pregnant women in England and Wales is estimated to be 6.1 million pounds for the 2 by 1,250 a regimen and £6.8 million for the 2 by 500 do regimen. If cost savings from reductions in treating hemolytic disease of the newborn are considered, 
the total net cost to the NHS in England and Wales would be pound 5.76.4 million per year. If routine ADB is only given to RHD negative primipary, the total gross cost of drugs would be approximately £2.4 million for the 2x500 regimen and £2.1 million for the 2x1250 regimen. The total cost of administration would be £450,000. The total net cost, including potential savings from reductions in hemolytic disease of the newborn, is estimated at approximately £2.32.6 million. The cost per Cali gained from a policy of routine ad given to primigravide was calculated on the basis of the published literature relating to the quality of life impact of minor developmental problems and long-term neurodevelopmental problems in low birth weight infants. In these terms, routine ad is economically attractive from the perspective of disability prevention alone, irrespective of attitudes to parental grief and valuation of stillbirths neonatal and postneonatal deaths. Routine ADB given to all pregnant women who are RHD negative is economically attractive, using a maximum acceptable cost-effectiveness ratio of £30,000 per cali, if the lost child, associated parental grief and subsequent high-intervention pregnancy are valued at more than 9 calis. In addition, Routine ad given to primigravide has a cost per lig that is very low in comparison to other interventions routinely funded by the NHS. The incremental cost per lig of giving routine ad to all pregnant women who are RHD negative is not as low, but there is still a chance of approximately 90% of the incremental cost effectiveness being better than £30,000 per lig compared to a primigravide only policy. Go to Conclusions The evidence suggests that routine ADP is effective in reducing the number of RHD-negative pregnant women who are sensitized during pregnancy. However, it cannot prevent all instances of sensitization, some of which occur either despite or before appropriate administration of anti-D. Some cases of sensitization in the UK are due to failure to adhere to the existing guidelines for the administration of anti-D either postpartum or in response to potential sensitizing events. It should therefore be possible to reduce sensitization rate by stricter adherence to current guidelines, and it could be argued that this should be pursued before initiating guidelines for the routine offering of ADP to pregnant women who are RHD negative. Issues relating to implementation of a policy of routine ADP. If a program of routine ADP were to be adopted, watertight mechanisms would need to be developed to ensure that prophylaxis is offered at the appropriate time to all women at risk of sensitization, in order to avoid additional cases of sensitization attributable to failure to provide prophylaxis when appropriate. As with other blood products, Mechanisms would also be required to ensure that individual women could be linked with specific batches of anti-D. The widespread administration of an intervention that would benefit only a few, unidentifiable, individuals is well established in medical practice, and would not present new ethical issues. However, it would be imperative that women were encouraged to take an informed choice, based on adequate information. The prime responsibility for ensuring that women understand the implications of the intervention, and consent to it, would rest with midwives. In many cases these midwives would be based in the community and or antenatal clinic, and would currently have varying levels of involvement with the administration of postnatal anti-D. The introduction of routine ADP would therefore have significant education and training implications.